When Nathan and Ariel first came to live with us, Ariel had just turned three. Nathan was almost two and just a bundle of energy. I've been fortunate enough to be the Smith's CASA from the very beginning and it has been a long journey but a very rewarding journey. We had the opportunity to meet when she came to the house that day. I never will forget it. When we opened the door, they were all excited to see this lady. They wanted to know who she was, what her name was. They just loved me and I loved them. And our relationship's just grown. Mm -hmm. We're almost the same family now. Mm -hmm. Nathan and Ariel lived in a meth lab. It had eaten the enamel off of her little baby teeth. When they first came to live with us, um, we had lots of upper respiratory issues, lots of medication, breathing treatments, all hours of the night and day. But Miss Sherry was always there for me. I could call her night or day. Anyone that's thinking about being a CASA representative, remember that it's just caring and it's from the heart and you want what's best for them. You want them to have the type of life that they deserve. I just thought, wow, that's a neat organization. Somebody can actually look out for these kids. I did a little bit of research and I realized that there was an organization here where I live. My first case I took was about three years ago. It was a group of four sisters. When I first met Shay, the youngest, she was maybe probably two. She's always been real bubbly, real happy, real friendly. The sweetest little girl ever. They call her Roxy and I call her Fairy Godmother. <laughs> Taylor. She is blonde and she's gorgeous. The first time I met her was whenever I first got in foster care. She told me that she was going to be my CASA and I told her that she was way prettier in person. She's helped me in the hard times, bad times. She's been in and out through thick and thin. I, I think she's great. The people who want to become CASA workers, they help children. I think everybody should become a CASA worker. Then there is Chanel. Chanel, to me, she is the diva of the group. My life without my CASA, I wouldn't be able to talk like I am right now. Because I want to become one. So if you want to help children out, go ahead. All the sisters are all, have always been real open and friendly, and I think that's what kind of attracted me to them and, you know, helped our relationship so much is because, I mean, well, from day one when I met them, we were friends. But you just go visit them, and you kind of let them know that you're just there, your friend, you're a voice in the court to them, but you're not CPS, you're not an attorney. It's more of a friendship, and you're there to let them know, hey, I'm here if you need to talk. She's been there for me, and she, when she came and got me, I was in a very mad state of mind, and she helped me through it. I think of her more as an aunt or maybe an older relative because she basically she sits and she'll take and ask me questions and make sure that I'm comfortable and that everything's doing fine and we just talk a lot. But a lot of people I think they get overwhelmed thinking you know it's a lot of work and, and you can't do it but you can. In September of last year, our house caught fire while we were gone, so fortunately no one was hurt. It was a total loss. Everything was destroyed. We had insurance, thank God, and so we were able to rebuild. But through that difficult time, um, I stayed at CASA. I never once thought about quitting or giving up. It was a busy time for our family. We had to relocate, live with family members and tried to just commute to work. We were living in another city with family. At that point, it would have been easier to quit CASA and to focus on rebuilding our lives, but I couldn't. I felt like I was one of the only people that they had left in their lives. From being torn out of their homes and placed in these foster homes, and here I come, uh, someone who is offering to stand by them till the end of it. I can't just walk away from that. It's not something that I felt like I had to do, it's something that I wanted to do. I was almost mad at myself for not doing it sooner. I mean, it felt so right. And I said, you know, what if I had done this a year ago when I was first considering it? What, why didn't I just... So that's what I'd like to say to everyone out there. Just, if you're thinking about it, just do it. Don't waste any more time. Uh, you need to do it. Jump in head first. 
you won't regret it. Um, the joy and the happiness that I get from being with these kids, um, it's the best feeling in the world. And I hope I can make them smile as much as they make me smile. The amount of time that I spend is not necessarily the amount of time that everyone has to spend uh, being a CASA volunteer. I just find that that's what I like to do. And some of these kids uh, that I get involved with, um, some require a little bit more time, some don't. Um, but it's really up to you as a CASA. It's a calling, in my opinion, um, and I've heard that from a lot of the people that do this. They felt the need to help children. It really, really makes a tremendous impact in these children's lives. What it has done for me has actually, what I expected it to do was it gave me an attachment to those kids. And it happened so quickly. I didn't think it was going to happen that quickly. I thought it would be an evolution over you know, a few months, but immediately it's like you're drawn to the kids because um, you're there for them. These sad situations are going to go on with or without your help. So you can do something to make that better or you can just pretend that it doesn't happen. Being across is such an opportunity to speak out on behalf of children and to do things um, to help children have a better life rather than just pretend those problems don't exist. We change the world one at a time and to take a troubled child and to have their best interest in mind and to go to bed thinking about them and wake up thinking about them is a magnificent thing that brings tremendous joy uh, to the volunteer. You are the one that's there for them and you can't do it. When they're in a happy place and you can see that there's joy in their lives, it, it really is special. It's very rewarding. That CASA just is invaluable. If you want to impact a child in a way that you can't even imagine, I cannot think of any other place where your volunteer hours will make as much of a difference. There's nothing like it. Um, it's, it can be very sad at times and definitely pull at your heartstrings, but once you realize that you can help a child, no matter what age, it's very rewarding. You get more out of it than you put into it. We had a couple of boys that were removed from her, uh, their mother's care because uh, the mother was uh, a drug user. We were able to uh, keep the boys in the family and the boys ended up going into uh, custody of the grandparents. You know, even to this day, I'll occasionally stop by and visit those boys, but they're doing so good. It was just uh, makes you feel good. CASA is there from the beginning and does not change that CASA person is there to solely represent their best interest. Things change, placements can change, caseworkers can change. Um, so for them to have that one constant person that follows them placement to placement, they still have the same CASA. They may not even recognize the term CASA, but they know that that person is there for them in their life. I'm here for them all the time, 24-7. They do know that when I call, that I'm there, when I visit, that it's playtime, and we get to interact. They get to show me their toys, their Barbies, or their schoolwork, whatever they've done in daycare. And I want them to know that we can make a difference together and that I'm there for them. It gives me a chance to surrogate the father type figure to the children. And because, um, some cases like I've had, some kids just, just didn't have fathers at, at home. To anyone who is uh, thinking about uh, joining this organization, become a court-appointed special advocate where that you can have and be a part of keeping children safe in the state of Texas.
CASA is the answer. <laughs> C-A-S-A. <laughs>